esteemed viewers welcome this is a pepsi channel may you please receive my greetings wherever you are according to your time and location today episode is captioned adeboye riedebo enenche bakare okonkwo okoti and others refused to pay condolence to let Prophet TB Joshua, even to death. Yes, you may want to know why it was so. Why these notable pastors and Jehovah's Witnesses of churches and ministries in Nigeria and even across the shores of this country have been adamant to the demise of Prophet TB Joshua. They never commiserate or condone with his wife and family. They never condone with his uh, church members. They never condone with individual truth associates up to this moment. But before I um, uh, divulge the reason why these men of God have refused to pay condolence, and most importantly, even the Umbrella Associations that bind or held together all Christian churches and fellowships like the Khan Christian Association of Nigeria and the EFN Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, these two umbrella, these two bodies as well, joined these notable pastors in refusing to pay condolence to uh, the late TB Prophet, Prophet TB Joshua. So before I let you into all that, uh, let me quickly review the life of the man D.B. Joshua and his ministry. Of course, um, D.B. Joshua was the founder of Synagogue of All Nations Church. And uh, you know, before his demise, he was the overseer of that church. But you recall that his life and that of his ministry was, were shredded with a lot of controversy. He was one man that uh, you know had these mixed feelings in the minds of people about him and his ministry. To many people out there, Prophet Ibn Joshua was that great healer that healed all manner of sicknesses, tuberculosis, HIV, S, name them, fibroids, everything. He healed all manner of sicknesses. So, so many people like that, he was the Messiah, he was the great healer. Then to some other persons, T.B. Joshua was a great philanthropist that rendered um, you know, welfare services to the poor and needy. To them, he was that great man, that charitable man that clothed the naked, fed the hungry, visited the those that were in the Visited, visited those in the hospital, visited the poor, you know, and administered all sorts of welfare packages to these people. Yet, to some other persons, he was, you know, TV Joshua was uh, a mystical man, a man whose powers uh, they claim we are not from God, you know, a man whose miracles. We are fake, a man whose powers we are authentic, and a man, you know, who initiated so many other uh, gospel preachers and uh, evangelists and Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, pastors and men of God to the authentic world. This is the impression the passion of people you know, had on him, had about him, you know. So, but to this point now, I will let you know why all these notable pastors in Nigeria have mentioned, ranging from Adebo to Adebo to Peace of Kofi, Pastor Paul in Nigeria, Bakare, and the whole lot of them, why they have refused to pay condolence to the family of the deceased person, or why they associated themselves including the CAN and the EFM, the Umbrella Body of Christian Association, even when throughout 
and the lifetime of the TV's entrepreneur until now that he has passed on. So please sit back and relax and watch this video clip to find out why it was so followers and nigerians at large are calling out and dragging popular and powerful men of god who have adamantly refused to speak or send condolence messages to the family of the late powerful man of god so who are the pastors who snubbed tb joshua's death chris okotie it's no secret that there was no love lost between the senior pastor of household of god international ministries chris okotie and tb joshua Okotie had always maintained that the late T.B. Joshua was a false prophet, performing miracles using shamanism. He believed T.B. Joshua was in an occultic group and even initiated many other pastors, including Pastor Chris Oyakilome. Sometimes in 2013, Okotie boldly declared that T.B. Joshua is the son of the devil. Coming after the death of the late televangelist, it is no surprise that Pastor Chris Okotie refused to commiserate with TB Joshua family and followers. Most people were shocked when he instead chose to mock and rejoice over his untimely death publicly. Mocking the death of TB Joshua, whom he called Lucifer, Okotie quoted a Bible passage that reads, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. He then went on to say, The wizard of Endor who assumed the title of Emmanuel has been consumed by divine indignation and now his disciples bewail his ignominious exit yet no marvel one third of god's angels followed the disgraced anointed cherub lucifer wow many described his message on tb joshua's passing as very shameful especially because it is coming from a pastor bishop mike okonkwo Bishop Mike Okonkwo, the founder of the Redeemed Evangelical Mission, TREM, has also refused to commiserate with both the family and followers of T.B. Joshua. While he was still president of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN, he labeled T.B. Joshua as one of the many fraudulent pastors that modernized cultism by injecting the name of Jesus Christ into their largely unbiblical practices. He was also one of the many pastors who solidly stood against T.B. Joshua's application to join PFN. Anselm Madubuko In 2002, Apostle Anselm Madubuko, the General Overseer of the Revival Assembly Church, called T.B. Joshua an occultist. His statement read, Joshua claims he was born again in his mother's womb. It is tragic that spirit-filled people are led astray by him. Now that T.B. Joshua has passed to the great beyond, it seemingly looks like he still stands by his beliefs and wants nothing to do with him, hence why he turned blind eyes after his death. Pastor E. A. Adeboye The general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. A. Adeboye, had never hidden the fact that he doesn't like the way the late T.B. Joshua went about his ministry. He once said that he could never worship in T.B. Joshua's church as they were not on the same page about salvation. Yes, he was also one of the many pastors who stood against granting the late televangelist permission to join their fold in the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. After T.B. Joshua's death, he has also refused to commiserate with his family and followers. Some of his members are trying to excuse him because one of his sons passed away last month and he may still be grieving. But not everyone is buying it. Because in the wake of the Twitter ban, Pastor Adeboye is one of the few pastors who condemned the government publicly and has been the most vocal about it. David Oyedepo as far back as 2012, David Oedipo, the general overseer of Living Faith Church, hosted other top pastors where they joined hands to pray to God to prevent T.B. Joshua from deceiving Christians with false miracles. He also was amongst the pastors who declared that T.B. Joshua is dangerous to the body of Christ both in Nigeria and globally. Even days after the death of T.B. Joshua, it seems like Oedipo stands by his earlier statement and doesn't think it deserves so much as a little recognition from Christians or men of God in his grave. Tunde Bakari Pastor Tunde Bakari of the Citadel Global Ministries severally denounced T.B. Joshua as fake based on God's vision. It is now believed that this is why he also has refused to commiserate with the family of the late prophet T.B. Joshua. Paul Eneche Paul Eneche, the senior pastor of Dunamis International Gospel Ministry Centers, has also been silent about the death of T.B. Joshua, and this is seemingly connected to the fact that T.B. Joshua was never recognized by Cannes or PFN in his lifetime. Pastor William Kumuyi 
Pastor William Kumuyi has also ignored acknowledging the sudden passing of TB Joshua. Like Paul Eneche, his silence is believed to be because the late prophet was never recognized by Khan or PFN in his lifetime. Chris Oyakilome For a long time, Chris Oyakilome of Christ Embassy Church was friends with TB Joshua. In fact, there were reports that TB Joshua initiated him into his cult and gave him powers to start his healing ministry. But over the years, Oyakilome slowly distanced himself from TB Joshua for obvious reasons. Some say he didn't want to be an outcast like TB Joshua and wanted to be accepted into the fold of Khan and PFN. Sadly, he has also joined other top pastors who refused to send condolence messages to the family and followers of TB Joshua. Laddie Thompson in the time past, Laddie Thompson, the senior pastor of Living Waters Unlimited Church, was accused of hating TB Joshua to a point where he began sponsoring the publication of his ex-disciples aimed at destroying his image. Sadly, even in his grave, Laddie Thompson has refused to drop his grudges with TB Joshua by refusing to commiserate with his family. TB Joshua is dead. Somebody shout hallelujah! Apparently, TB Joshua was disliked by top Nigerian pastors and pastors from other African countries. A Ugandan pastor, Jackson Senyonga of Christian Life Church, was seen jubilating with his church members over the death of TB Joshua. In the video, which has since gone viral, it could be heard saying that the late prophet sacrificed the life of others, thinking his own life was worth more than theirs. He said it was a fake prophet and his death means victory. Further speaking, the Ugandan pastor claimed that the late TB Joshua initiated some pastors into witchcraft and it was the biggest witch in Africa. He then prayed that fire consumes other false prophets and fake preachers in Africa. Meanwhile, after Dele Momodu, a popular Nigerian journalist criticized Khan and top pastors for ignoring the death of TB Joshua, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria eventually put out a statement describing TB Joshua as a Nigerian charismatic pastor, televangelist and philanthropist who devoted his entire life to spreading the gospel and meeting the needs of the poor. They noted his death is both a loss to his family, the church, Viewers, welcome back. We have watched the videos. And uh, TV Joshua, even when he was alive, made several frantic efforts to identify with Khan, Christian Association of Nigeria, and the Pentecostal Fellowship uh, of Nigeria. He made attempts to join them, to be associated with them, but they refused him bluntly, you know, calling him names. Some call him apotic, some call him satanic, they call him devilish. They call him all manner of names, all sorts of names. So I, I don't know whether those um, I know some even accused him that he was not born again. But for the when, when he was alive, claimed that he was born again right inside his mother's womb. So they found this uh, ridiculous, and they labeled him, you know, as such. They call him so many negative names. So I don't know whether those names uh, came as a result of envy. Because of uh, the fame of the TV who were gathered for himself. You know, he was a man who was well known across far and near, across the shores of this country. Right here. So, do you, do you think, you know, the ostracization, uh, not allowing him to join the other body, the can, and also um, the various uh, notable pastors and universities refusing to associate with him, uh, do you think that was born out of? envy and jealousy because of his popularity or do you think that those allegations level against him, you know hold some water please use the comment section to express your feelings and then uh, this is uh, like i said earlier on this is pepsi channel uh, like this video share it and then subscribe to this channel pepsi channel and uh, don't forget to hit the bell button so that each time i you know upload the video Come your way. Come your way next time. God bless you. Thank you.